Hello again and welcome back to the channel. I must say after spending so much time sifting through case files, I generally find myself becoming desensitized to mysteries involving true crime. However, every now and again I must admit one topic will follow me for months on end and I think we all have that one individual case that we just want so desperately solved. And there hasn't been much coverage of this particular topic, so I thought I would do a video on it. This one definitely gets the mind going, so let me begin to tell you all about Canada's most mysterious maximum security prisoner. And the story all begins on October 28, 2012 in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. When a man had arrived from a flight from Cuba bearing a French passport, he claimed it was not his first visit to Canada, and he said he had originally come six months earlier and had left a week before for his friend's sister's funeral wake. As this would turn out, this was a lie. He was still given a 10-day visitor visa, and when he went to a Days Inn where he had a reservation, he also had $3,000 in his bank account and a return ticket. However, he would never actually end up leaving the country, and six months later, he would be arrested for a completely unbelievable scam and when he was arrested, he would go by the name Herman Emanuel Fankham. And the scam that he ended up getting arrested for was known as a black money or wash scam. Fankham and four other co-conspirators who are yet to be identified responded to a Toronto real estate ad claiming that they had money coming in from South Africa that they would use to pay for a property. However, the money was coated in a special black coating to disguise it so they could get it out of the country. And in order to remove the coating, they needed a certain expensive chemical. And in order to convince the wary buyer, they even demonstrated how the chemical would work. And after they demonstrated the process to the man, he was told that he needed to put money down for this special chemical in order for him to receive a cut of the cash that would be coming in. And unfortunately for him, the black money turned out to be fake and he had been out about $450,000 by the time he figured it out. Officers arrested Fankham at a hotel where he was staying under another name. He did not have his passport with him. Once the police had realized that he was a visitor of Canada and his visa had expired, they had called Canada Border Services Agency, or the CBSA. The CBSA stayed his criminal charges in order to expedite his removal from Canada, but there was a problem. Herman Emmanuel Fankham was not who he claimed to be. In fact, officials could not figure out who he really was. And since this is a mystery video, you probably know where this is going. At first, he was cooperative, but once his identity was brought into question, he became defiant. At one immigration detention review hearing, he told the adjudicator to go to hell when all she had done was simply ask for confirmation that she was speaking to the right person. And over the course of four and a half years, he has refused to attend 51 detention review hearings. He's told people to go fuck themselves, he's claimed that he's been kidnapped, and the situation has spiraled so far out of control that the judge stated, This court's impression is that the unknown person considers himself to be a director of a play, and Canadian authorities are but actors subject to his direction. Because he can't be deported to his home country, he's somewhat caught in a legal loophole. I will note throughout all of the 51 detention review hearings, he demanded to speak with French diplomats because he claimed to be French working in England. And when given the opportunity to meet with him, he still refused to go twice. And the extent of this person's defiance has gone as far as where he will not allow people to take pictures of him and has fought off giving any kind of fingerprint. And that seems to make sense as it's very hard to find any other photos of him online. And there doesn't appear to be any video footage of him either. Getting back to him being French, a later tip from Interpol informed authorities that he had previously faked a birth certificate to gain various travel and identity documents in Paris. On top of that, there was no one named Herman Emmanuel Fankham in the French registry. French authorities stated that they did not believe he had a criminal record in France and that they believed he was from Cameroon, but where this gets incredibly interesting is when France busted a forgery ring in 2009 where after an extensive investigation into this ring, one person had actually admitted to creating a forgery by the name of Ermin Emmanuel Fankham. Apparently, whoever had the passport at that time was arrested attempting to board a flight to Canada of all places, and for some reason, he was released. I couldn't find any press on this forgery ring bust in 2009 outside of this article I'm referencing. However, I did find one in 2008, but this does seem to be a bit contradictory. You'd think that the person who was caught using a fake passport would at least have the thing confiscated from them. 
An investigator from Cameroon told the CBSA that they believed Fankham had used to be a clothing vendor there who had moved to Britain, and even showed a picture of the man in the area where he had supposedly lived. In Britain, police turned up a positive fingerprint match between Fankham and another identity, Buon Emmanuel Fabil, a citizen of Cameroon. And as if the situation couldn't get more convoluted, it also matched the identity of three other men, one from Cameroon, one from Haiti, and one of unknown origin. This same person had also been arrested in England twice, and it stayed in prison under two different names. And might I add, both charges were for fraudulent documents. And while it does not disclose the full details, it does say that he also appeared in a German database, which potentially means that he spent some time there too. This whole situation is completely ridiculous, and we're no closer to getting his true identity. And despite all of these resources going into finding who this man is, it is still truly unknown. Naturally, you have to ask, who the hell is this guy? No connection to family, financial investment, or anything alike. This person seems to be a nomadic serial fraudster, and while he remains in prison, he continues to refuse to cooperate, leaving himself in a legal limbo. He is simply known as the unknown person, and this naturally begs a ton of questions, with the largest being, how did this person get into these circumstances where their preferred alternative is staying in a maximum security prison. And it's gotten to the point that in June of 2018, an IRB adjudicator had ordered the man to be released because they were simply so fed up with the situation. And while that was denied and he still remains in jail, it leaves us to speculate heavily, especially when in 2019, the details of this hearing and this case have been made private. And to quote another National Post article, it would write, the mystery of the unknown person may never be publicly solved after the Immigration and Refugee Board made hearings on the case private as an accommodation to his legal counsel's concern the unidentified imprisoned man may disclose information that would be harmful to his own case. And to quote further, his case is being heard by Immigration Division of Immigration and Refugee Board, the IRB where hearings must by law be open to the public, similar to court trials, except under exceptional circumstances. This whole situation is so incredibly bizarre, and while the reasoning cited is not to create any additional distress to the man's mental health and not have any media coverage in the situation, it really leaves everything wide open for interpretation. We do know that he's involved with some ring of fraud, that's for sure, However, the bizarre series of arrests with little to no background info makes this person a walking ghost. One of the main theories that has been circulating around is that he's some sort of spy. However, one major counterpoint to this is that spies probably wouldn't be involved in this kind of fraud, and the fact that they target someone from a Craigslist ad seems even more off character. However, I have to question how was he able to get that passport back in the first place when he was arrested back in France, and the other two times he was arrested in England. And this definitely does make sense, however, the connection to Cameroon, if he is actually from there, might make it a lot easier for someone like this to go under the radar. Many people look for any opportunity to get out of a developing country and look for greener pastures. But on the other hand here, this doesn't explain why this person was traveling around and around and around. While I like to generally lean on some conclusive theory at the end of these videos, I, I really don't know in this case. However, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about this. This is Barely Sociable. Have a good night.